Hello friends, welcome to PySpark Databricks video tutorials and uh, this session I am going to give you complete uh, example end to end how to read XML files and uh, how to write XML files. So previous sessions I have covered on JSON files and this session is completely on XML files. If you have any requirement, uh, if you are getting XML files from source system, if you want to read those files or if you have some data and if you want to give some output as a target system as XML files, we can use this API. In uh, PySpark Databricks, so before using this first we need to install the package. So that package, uh, whenever you are creating a cluster, you can choose the runtime uh, 7.1. Here you can see this, any of this, because Spark 3.0 we need to select this uh, API if you want to use XML. So I am choosing this. Uh, Scala 2.12 and uh, Spark 3.0. So this API is not working in earlier versions. So previous versions it's not working. So we'll go with the latest Spark 3 version. Choose this and give any name, your cluster name. Think just uh, verify existing cluster is there. Yeah, existing cluster is there. You can uh, drop this existing cluster uh, yeah it's dropped then create a new cluster select the runtime this one test cluster or any name you can use why if you have any requirement with ml uh, anything related to you can choose this ml uh, runtime like different uh, runtimes are available so genomics, if you have a requirement, you can use this version, but just uh, I'm not using any ML or anything here. Just uh, I'm choosing a default one. Then create cluster. So cluster will be created uh, another two minutes. Let's start with the XML uh, files. Okay. So just I'm giving an example. So whenever you have a requirement reading uh, XML files, so we need to use that uh, Maven repo, we need to connect to Maven repository and uh, import uh, a package name called the Spark XML. So this one we need to import this plugin. This uh, plugin will be using for reading and writing XML files. So if you go to cluster there you can find this Maven and you can search there Spark XML. Then uh, select this this version and install then you can use your XML files, reading and writing XML files. So whatever we covered in previous session, JSON files, but there is a difference in XML. Why? Because whenever you are reading XML, you need to remember few options that is called row tag and root tag. Why? Because for XML files, we need to specify root tag and row tag these two options we need to specify and the format it's a type called xml we can use xml or com.databricks.spark.xml any one we can use okay and options we need to specify for example my file is having a root tag is emp and row tag is row and my file location is this so like this we can go for specify using this this is the list of other parameters that are available and you can use this while writing you can use this compression option value tag and uh, null value like write uh, whenever you have a null value so default uh, string will use a null value and the main uh, important one is row tag and row tag while reading and while writing so let's start with the example uh, if you want to define any custom schema, we can use this struct type and first we will import all the types here. Then we can use define this. This is my XML schema custom data types. If you want to define, you can define this. Uh, instead of installing there directly, you can use this command. Use pip command. You can install here this spark cell. This is the package which we are going to use but I, I'm going to explain how to install in cluster. Just attach this cluster if cluster is ready. Yeah, cluster is ready. 
as of now I am not installed that plugin. If you try to read that JSON, uh, sorry, XML file, so I have XML file available in my Databricks account. FS ELS file store tables. This is the file is available. dot xml just i'm verifying if file is available or not so if once file is available just we can go for reading using these options uh, these two options is mandatory as well as format type format type we can use see the xml file is available two one is directly can specify format is xml or another one is we can specify this one so if you read with the plain text okay if you read with plain text so you can see that how XML file looks like I will show you that one also df spot dot read dot text just I'm reading this file as a text then I will show you how XML files looks like you can display meanwhile see here it's a single value it is created because uh, we re read as a text file see this is the XML file here you can see as I told a root tag and row tag root tag is emp and each row is separated with this tag row okay like this you can see this multiple row tags root tag is a table complete like this is my xml data so then start read use this option just i am creating this here you can see this it is showing uh, whatever we are using for my type it is not available so first we need to go to your cluster go to libraries install new go to maven search packages select maven here right so maven central repository spark xml you search with this here you can get this select the latest version whichever is available here is 9 is available okay and here this is the artifact id and group id Just click on select just install so we are installing this package in library section so this library which we are going to use for reading xml file this library name is called spark xml this is the version so it will take a few seconds so depending on the network because we are using a trial version that's why uh, you will get only uh, less configuration this cluster configuration but still it won't take much time here you can see this this is the library which we are going to use for reading xml Yeah, it's installed. You can try it again now. Yeah, see here. Now it is executed successfully. Now you can see this all uh, because we already mentioned this root tag and uh, row tag. That's why we can see this all columns. That's called. You can just go for using a print schema. control enter so control enter is shortcut the default you can run this here you can see this this is the schema and those data types okay why because we use this options that's why it is importing as expected now you can display the data 
we can use a display yeah this is the data okay all 15 records are available and it is showing as table format because and instead of using this one format type we can use only XML and a schema custom schema here as I told you right this you can create a custom schema yeah this is my custom schema you can verify that it is created or not see here this is the custom schema it's created while reading my XML file I can specify another parameter name called schema and that schema custom schema then options is same root tag and row tag I have mentioned just I'm reading this see now all our strings so earlier when you look at this here because integer and uh, the long data type here you can see and string data type but when we created a custom schema we all specified as string type that's why here it is created as string type thus call you can specify your custom schema then you can read the data so this is the holler strings is created now so like this we can go for reading XML files so if you not specify this options if you not specify this options just uh, EMP data frame name I'm changing here let's look at this because we already specified here custom schema you still if you not specify this see you can uh, verify the schema how it's uh, read this XML file see only root is available why because we not specified schema we not specified row tag and root tag elements that's why it is just created a root and uh, you can see this data so whenever we are going for display see just okay so that's why row tag and row tag is this one now have specified root tag and root tag now I'm reading this data here you can see this so like this we can go for reading XML files one okay then how to write XML files so same we need we need to remember that this options that's called a root tag and a row tag elements we need to give you can use any name and uh, mode is very important here whenever if you want to overwrite existing data you can use overwrite if you want to add if you don't want to delete existing data we can use just append just run this just I'm reading uh, existing data frame select star star means all columns then write format is XML okay you can use any of this XML or databricks.spark.xml any of this format you can use and options both options root tag and row tag then save option I'll save it it will save into particular location this location for example I have five okay just five XML it will create one directory five XML there it will create XML file just run this
this is the directory it will create a XML file in this location just it's running it may take another few seconds wait So because it's a training uh, one we are using that now you can see it's done you can run this you can verify see here it is created a part file and this is the size okay so like this we can go for creating like writing XML files reading XML files so important thing we need to remember that this options and format file format if you are using a databricks we need to first import that library so i have already mentioned the steps where we can import these libraries or directly we can install in your notebook itself using pip install okay using this option that this is the package okay or directly go to your uh, libraries maven repository search select maven central repository spark xml so here this is the latest version and uh, release is 0.9 release you can select this and install we have already installed this just I'm showing again like this we can go for reading and writing XML files in PySpur in Azure Databricks so thank you for watching my videos if you like this video please subscribe my channel and share this video thank you very much